Management Studies IGNU presents an audiobook on the course MMPC 007 Business Communication for MBA program. Presenting Block 1 Introduction to Communication Unit 4 Forms of Communication at Workplace Part 2 Learners, in Part 1, we learned about Introduction and Formal Communication. In Part 2, we will learn about Informal Communication, Conflict Resolution at Workplace, Crisis Communication and Benefits of Effective Communication at Workplace. Let's listen to Part 2. Informal Communication the interaction between employees of an organization in performing their duties is mostly formal in nature, but it is not sufficient because human beings need to interact with each other without the boundaries and chain of commands of formal communication to develop interpersonal relationships. Thus, we establish interaction with other members at our workplace beyond our professional duties. We develop casual friendly relationships with our colleagues and communicate on topics outside work. It is an important aspect of our professional life that give us respite from the boundaries of predefined chains of commands and channels which defines our life at the workplace. This form of communication is natural and hence people talk about various topics outside work. People discuss sports, movies, politics, future plans etc. more freely. This type of communication is mostly oral. It moves faster between the people as compared to formal communication. Due to its inherent nature, it does not leave any paper trail and the information cannot be validated for its authenticity. Informal communication often begins between employees through social interactions. In many cases, such type of communication at the workplace is considered effective as it helps in team building activities and people can come together to work as one unit. Employees can also help in motivating each other by extending help with work related issues. Informal communication can help build a strong interpersonal relationship between employees who can work together more efficiently as one team towards achieving a common goal. It is important to note that it can lead to the spreading of incorrect information and gossip because the flow of information is not controlled and may lead to loss of production time. These gossips can popularize a rumor which may not be in the interest of the business. It is difficult to contain them in the initial stage because they travel quickly. Types of informal communication Informal communication at the workplace are mostly harmless gossip. The subject of these interactions at the workplace may include information about sports, movies, entertainment, a person switching jobs, an employee getting married or divorced, etc. This type of communication is popularly classified with the term grape wine. It is an essential characteristic of workplace communication in all the organizations. Information flows in all directions through grape wine. It is governed by personal relationships and social norms instead of formally recognized rules or procedures. 
This type of communication can be vertical, horizontal or diagonal. Professor Keith Davis in 1979 studied this form of communication and opined that the grapevine is a natural part of a company's total communication system. It is a significant force within the work group helping to build teamwork, motivate people and create or corporate identity. Single Strand Chain It involves the transfer of information from one member of a line or group to another. For example, member A transfers some information to member B. Then member B transfers that information to member C who transfers the same information to member D and the chain moves in a similar fashion. In a single strand chain, grapevine, the information moves from one person to another in a linear manner. Gossip chain. This type of informal communication can be understood as one seeking and transferring information to all the other members of a group. This one person is the key point in the spread of information. She or he stays at the center of information exchange. For example, member A can transfer information to member B, member C, member D and so on. The exchange of information in this type of informal communication depends on person A at the center. She or he actively seeks and transfers information to other members actively. The other members do not pass information to each other directly. Probability Chain In this type of grapevine communication, the information is transferred from one person to another randomly. They do not choose a participant. The information does not move in a sequence or pattern. Here, member A can transfer information to member B or D or I and so on. Then those members can transfer the same information in a similar fashion. Cluster chain. The message is transferred to select members and every member who has the information selects another set of members. The information moves in the form of a cluster of people communicating, transferring the message to new members. For example, person A transfers information to B and C. In this case, person A is the sender of the message and B and C are receivers. Then, the new members take up the role of senders and transfer the information to new receivers. Conflict Resolution at Workplace The process of communication at the workplace is not always cordial and about establishing good relationships. There are people from different families and educational backgrounds working together as a team in an organization. They have different types of personalities, exposures and experiences of life and hence, unfortunately, they may have a difference of opinion which may result in a conflict situations. These conflict situations may escalate and become very large eventually disrupting the smooth functioning of business processes if not addressed at an early stage. They may arise because of personal or professional differences and a manager must handle it professionally and use effective strategies to reach an amicable conflict resolution. They may use the following strategies in the due process of conflict resolution. First, active listening. 
Active listening is one of the most important steps in becoming a good communicator. In a conflict situation, the mediator, that is the manager or peer, must listen carefully to understand the issue properly. Both parties must be heard completely and patiently. The mediator must be patient and carefully listen to the argument of each side without any interruptions. This will lead to two possible benefits. The parties involved in the conflict situation will get a chance to vent out their differences and the mediator may be able to combine the opposing ideas and facilitate a peaceful resolution beneficial for both parties. But without active listening, one cannot reach a resolution. Second, set goals. The mediator is responsible to set the goals of the meeting by motivating all the parties that they are here for resolution. There should be a willingness from all the parties involved to reach a common ground for a successful resolution of the conflict. They should listen to each other actively and brainstorm about possible common grounds. It is alright to disagree with the colleague's point of view. However, in a conflict resolution situation, the parties involved should acknowledge that they are here to solve a problem together and should work with each other as a team instead of against each other. Third, stay professional. The conflict situation at the workplace may arise because of personal differences between two employees at the same or different levels. The problems involving personal differences may heighten the emotional response and intensify the conflict situation. The parties involved in the process of conflict resolution should keep a check on the emotional responses and stay calm at all times. It will help maintain a calm and composed presence. A calm and composed behavior is a sign of strong professional etiquette. It also helps in dealing with the conflict situation with a clearer mind and hence reaching resolution becomes easier. Fourth, stay neutral. This is one of the most important strategies for effective conflict resolution. A neutral mediator has high acceptance among the parties involved in a conflict situation. The mediator must listen to all the parties involved patiently, summarize the point of difference for all of them to display that she or he is not favoring one party or another. The parties involved in a conflict resolution are more likely to accept the solution proposed by the mediator if all the parties consider him or her as a neutral mediator. On the other hand, if the mediator is perceived as biased, then the conflict resolution is more likely to fail. Fifth, fact check. It is very important to fact check before the process of conflict resolution. It is the responsibility of the mediator to verify the facts before reaching a conclusion. It is important to cross-check all the facts and listen to all the perspectives thoroughly. The mediator should allow every single party involved in the conflict situation to present their side of story in detail to get the relevant facts. It may be very helpful when proposing a solution. A thorough investigation is essential to establish the correct version of the facts and propose a solution 
which will be acceptable by all the parties. The mediator cannot afford to overlook any of the facts presented during the process of conflict resolution because it may affect the success of the proposed solution. Crisis Communication This type of communication at the workplace deals with protecting and defending the employees and company for any unforeseen situation. It deals with the threat which can cause damage to the entire business at organizational and employee levels. At the organizational level, crisis communication is required to deal with situations like a data security breach, product recall, bankruptcy situations, etc. At the employee level, it may deal with fire or accident injuries, sexual harassment, etc. The goal of the crisis communication at the workplace is to have a seamless communication network that can effectively deal with the crisis situation effectively and efficiently. For example, you must have participated or heard about fire drills in an organization. The purpose of these drills is to train employees to act effectively during a fire accident in the company premises. We have media relations experts working for an organization. They are experts who are trained to communicate effectively in a situation which involves the media to protect the reputation of the business. Crisis communication is integral for the efficient functioning of an organization. The stakeholders cannot afford to take a risk and do not have a structure in place to communicate in crisis situations. An organization must have a robust communication plan and train employees properly in order to have effective crisis communication in place. It will help the organizations to be prepared in case of financial disaster, natural calamities, personal injuries, etc. Benefits of Effective Communication at Workplace First, effective communication at the workplace can help establish a strong interpersonal skills among employees. They can deal with any misunderstanding clearly and work together as a team towards a common goal. Second, it helps in developing a healthy work culture where people trust each other. They have faith in the vision, mission and goals of the company. Third, it can promote a positive social environment. People perform better when they develop social connections with their colleagues. They can keep each other motivated. Fourth, effective communication helps in building rapport between employees and management. Clear channels of communication can improve employee satisfaction because of the transparency and ease of communication. Fifth, communication is necessary to keep the instruction clear and comprehensible. Employees will easily understand their job instructions, policies, procedures. This will again improve employee satisfaction. Sixth, effective communication can promote team spirit. The employees will not only work as a team but help each other achieve the goals. Seventh, it will help to solve conflict situations easily. It is not possible to avoid conflict situations where people come together for common cause. We have already discussed how effective communication can help in conflict resolution in previous sections of this unit. 
Eighth, it will promote a safe environment at the workplace. When the company effectively conveys that the organization is concerned about the safety and security of the employees at the workplace, it is prepared for any kind of medical or natural emergencies, then employees feel safe and secure while discharging their duties. Communicating this information effectively will increase the morale of the employee and they will be motivated to work hard to achieve the common goals. Summary We have the importance of effective communication at the workplace. Communication at the workplace can be categorized as formal and informal communication. Formal and informal communication play an important role in the growth and success of an organization and its employees. Formal communications are authoritarian in nature and follow a proper chain of commands. On the other hand, informal communications are democratic in nature and do not follow any established chain or hierarchy of commands. It is important for an organization to effectively use both channels of formal and informal communication to achieve maximum efficiency. And it is also important for an organization to train employees to communicate effectively in discharging their daily duties to achieve its goals. You are listening to audiobook by School of Management Studies IGNO for MBA program. Course code MMPC 007 Business Communication Unit 4 Part 2 Course Coordinator Professor Neeti Agrawal from School of Management Studies IGNO Voice over by Santosh Bharti Edited by Taranam Jaha Program assisted by Jagbandhu Jana And program produced by Manoj Kumar Singh This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University <laughs>